Welcome everybody back to Red G Fox. And today we're on episode breakdown and this is a very funny one. This one I really enjoyed. It actually had more than five top five funnies. So I probably squeezed one in there. But this is this is classic Sanford and Son. This is, it's hard to say classic, right? They, they're all memorable. But this one I really enjoyed. As you've seen some of the past ones, uh, season one has probably been best story. But it's also one where it's not, I don't find myself busting up laughing as much. Um, still great episodes. But this one I had a lot of scenes where it was really funny. It was really good. And the way Fred and Lamont, the way they go back and forth, this is perfection, Sanford and Son. And this is The Great Sanford Siege. And this is basically, let's get right to it. We'll have summary. I'll try to go as quick as I can. Sometimes I blab, blab, blabber. And then we're going to do top five, or the top five funnies throughout it. We will have f fun facts and familiar faces because there are some familiar faces in this, in this episode, which I love. Now we're going to start out right away. Quick summary. Lamont comes in, Fred's sitting down, hanging out in the living room, and Lamont brings in the, the bills. And he starts going through them, and he keeps seeing all these things, overdue, overdue. And they're coming after him. And Fred's like, put them back in the mail. He's basically what he's been doing. And it, has you ever been through that? It's funny how, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't know anything about bills. I just knew they came. My dad would do that. He would either put them back or he'd throw them away. He would wait till like the third notice, and he had plenty of money, you know? So it's like, I don't get how he would get away with it. But maybe eventually paid at the end. But it was funny hearing that going, man, Fred's like, just keep putting them back, putting them back. And that's what he had been doing. So Lamont's mad. And he's like, hey, man, we, they can come in. We've already got one where they're coming to collect the furniture place. They're coming to try to take our furniture. We can lose our TV. We can lose everything. And Fred, he starts going, I, I can't lose my TV because then I can't. What was it? Uh, Mickey, and <laughs> Mickey and Laura. This is not top five funny, but it's still funny as heck. As he starts going, he's breaking it down to Lamont like, I can't lose my TV. If I lose my TV, I won't know what happened with Mickey and Laura and blah, blah, blah. And he goes into the whole development of what's going on in the soap opera. And Lamont's getting furious and he's like, I got to know what happened with Mickey and Laura. Great, great scene right there as Fred does not want to lose his TV. And Lamont gets ticked. He's mad at him. He's like, this is ridiculous. You know, you should have been paying these bills. And he's going into it and he's really ripping him to him. And this is a top five funny. And it's just one line, but it had me busting up laughing. I got to get it perfectly. It's when he, he he's asking, he's like, haven't you, you know, these bills are coming in time. Why aren't you paying them? And he's like, Fred's like, the bills have been coming in time, but there's a slight, slight delay in the money. And he taps the side of his pocket showing that, dude, if I had the money when the bills came, I'd pay them. But we're having a slight delay on the, the cash coming in. So you can't blame Fred. He's in the end, if you've ever struggled with bills, you know what it's like. You got to pay for food and you got to pay where you live. You got a roof over your head. Those are the top two things you got to pay. Everything else could take a back seat. And so I don't blame Fred in doing this. He hasn't been paying it. If they don't have the money, it's not like he's out gambling or something. And so we get to that and then they go, let's go make a phone call. And I love this Fred, one of the classic things, pulling out the glasses and he's changing the different glasses. He's like, were you messing with these? Are you messing with my glasses? They're all out of order. Go figure, right? How does he even know what order they're in? So he's putting them, and then he, he goes to make the phone call, right? And then he picks up the phone, and the phone's out. So he goes in there, runs in the kitchen, uh, and the gas is off. They can't cook now. Uh, they, they're, I don't believe they have any power yet. So now they're in trouble. They got nothing. And so they're gonna try to take care of this, and then there's a, a knock at the door. Lamont goes upstairs, Fred goes to get it, and was this top five funny? Yes, this is one of the top five funny when the gentleman tries to mention, hey, are you, and he's cracking through the door like this. He's, got, he's like, are you Fred Sanford? And he tries to act like he doesn't speak English. And it's funny, if you've ever had this, I've had phone calls where you're just like, as a joke, you might be like, oh, I don't know what this, back in the day where you wouldn't see it was spam call. You'd just be like, hola. And, they'd be, and then they start, they start responding to you in Spanish and you're like, click. And that's what Fred does. He's trying to act like, uh, no hablo inglés. And he's doing it and the guy starts speaking Spanish. And he's like, what? No espanol. <laughs> It's such a good scene. And then he tries to put his hand in there for a summons. And Fred's like, get that out of here. And he throws his hands out. It, it's so believable. And he closes it. Now the guy's going to wait. He's like, well, I'm not going anywhere. You, And then he slides under the door. He's like, you've been served. And he's like, no, we haven't. And Fred goes back. They go back and forth. And Fred's like, it, it's your serve. Like it's a tennis match. And the guy does. He's going to hold him, himself out. That's why it's basically like they're trapped in a fort. And they're just going to wait it out. See who can win that battle. So they're waiting and, and while they're doing that, they got no no food. I mean, they got food, but no, we'll cover the food part in a second, but no no way to cook. You know, how much longer, I, I, the water, the electricity, everything. So Lamont's just had it. You know, he's frustrated with his dad and he's sitting there and he's he's he starts to try to rest his eyes and relax. And Fred, before he does that, Fred's like, 
he comes out and this is top five funny when he comes out with the can for the, the zucchini and then he's got the cans for the beans and it, it, no matter how many times I see that scene I cannot stop laughing when he's because he keeps saying it and he does it so well where he's like we can have pork and beans I can have a little zucchini and you can have a little uh, pork and beans or you can have a little pork and beans or I can have a little pork and beans and you can have a little zucchini or you can have all and you if you've seen it you know he just does such a, a combo it's almost like trying to guess a combination lock where you're doing every combo of the number he's doing every possible combination with the zucchini and the pork and beans and then he goes through it again because there's no you can't even heat it up so then he goes through cold zucchini and cold pork and beans and top five funny 100 i love that scene and every time i hear pork and beans or zucchini which my wife absolutely loves zucchini if she ever gets it this scene always pops in my head can't i'll never be able to escape it so comment if you've ever had that where something from this show pops up and then you think of the show right away where it's cursed it's tattooed to our brain so lamont as he does that he kind of falls asleep and then Fred's reaching his pocket for something, and you hear the, he hears the crumbling, and he's like, what is this? And he pulls it out, and it's crackers, and he's about to tell Lamont, and then he goes, no. And he opens it, and it reminds me of the episode of I Love Lucy, if you ever are a big I Love Lucy fan, where they're in the uh, cab, when they get covered with snow, and they're trapped in when they're in the, the, the Swiss Alps, the mountains, and they're all out of food, and Lucy remembers she still has some of her sandwich she saved, and it's the crumbling paper, and they can hear it. And they all wake up and they smell the food and they hear it. Well, in this one, Lamont hears the crumbling. And he's like this. And it's top five funny when Lamont opens his eyes and he sees it. And he try and he sneaks around Fred. And Fred's like, oh, I don't got nothing. And he's like, you got crackers. He's like, you snuck it. You, How are you going to do that? We're supposed to stick together. And he lays into him like Lamont is perfect at doing. And then when he goes, I don't have anything. He's all, then whistle. And he's all. <laughs> it's so good, dude. You can even see the crackers fly out. Excellent scene. Well written and absolutely brilliant performed. So they're, now they're at ends of each other. What are you going to do? And then there's another knock on the door. And now it's the guy coming from the, the furniture store. And he's like, hey, Samford, I need to get in there. And they're like, no, you're not. And it's basically back and forth banter. And we're not going to bore you with all the whole conversation. But the guy's saying he's going to go get Marshalls. And Fred's like, you better not be here. Now, I can't remember. Did Fred say it to this guy or the first guy? He, one of the guys, Fred said... Air, you better get out of here before it gets dark. You get your hat brought to the, uh, get your hat brought with you, or brought hat to the hospital. An old expression. Fred uses that a lot. Your hat to the hospital in the show, and they're both white dudes, so of course he's gonna say that to him. And this is not the best neighborhood at night, where they're probably gonna get robbed. So the other guy leaves, and we'll cover both of these guys, the actors. I love it. I love, especially the second one who comes. So he leaves, and now he's like, oh, he ain't gonna get no Marshall. It ain't gonna happen. Nothing. Other stuff happens. Nothing of important that's as important until he does come. He comes back and he's got the marshals and they're like, and Lamont's mad. Remember he Lamont's uh, where he's totally totally upset at Fred. He said this whole thing's your fault. You know if you just taking care of this situation, we wouldn't even be here. And he's had it. He's like you you know you're withholding the crackers. You're turning on me. And so he's like I'm gonna let him in. And he's like oh go ahead. And he opens it up and then the marshals come in and they they go right there and they start saying what they're going to collect and he's like oh you know give us a little extension he's like oh no 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 no, you had your chance and it's dick van patten and he's like you had your chance no no it's done we're here to collect it we're going to take this and we're going to take that and fred's like hey you know come on just give us more time and as he, and as they're in there as the marsh before they go upstairs the marshal's there and fred talks to him and he's like hey brother he said how are you gonna do you gotta back me up you got you know and he's like and the guy's like sorry you know it, it's it's the law and he goes man why couldn't you get a respectable job <laughs> Why couldn't you get a respectful job? Being a marshal is not a respectful job. Fred totally grills into him because he's not helping him out. But as they go up there, there's two of them, and they start to go to check the other things. Well, Fred's trying. He's going with Van Patten trying to say, hey, come on, come on. And then as he goes, brilliant move by Fred. Absolutely love this scene, and it's top five funny. He knows what's happening. He takes a couple steps back and throws himself down, and Lamont's still not even getting it. Lamont's like... What are you doing? You know, you're like a kid throwing a tamper. What's going on? He's just giving him the weirdest look. And then Fred starts screaming. And he's like, oh, oh, my back, my back. Oh, he threw me. He's and he, it reminds me, which it does not happen yet. But remember later when Gus gets the injury, the, the homeless gentleman, where he fakes it. And then Fred fakes it. And he's like, put me on the couch. Give me some cold beer, Lamont. <laughs> That's what he's doing here. But he's wisely doing it. And Van Patten comes down and the marshals and they're like, and he's like, oh, get up. I didn't do anything to you. You didn't even fall down. You're just totally overdoing it. And they played so well. And he's acting. He's on the couch and his back's killing him. And 
the he and now Van Patten's even nervous. He's like, well, I don't know. But, you know, it's his word against mine, and his son's here. And so he looks at the marshal, and he's like, uh, what, do you think he has a case? Do you think he could do something? And you can see he's really have, fearful. And the marshal's like, what? what do, and then he's like, these are your people. These are your people. What do you think I should do? And he's like, you want my honest opinion? And the guy's name is Palmer. He's, you can see his badge, Palmer. And he's like, you want my opinion? He said, I think you should get out of this neighborhood before it gets dark. <laughs> That's why I love that line. It's a callback from what Fred had said earlier. Now he whips it out. And Ben Patton's like, okay, okay. Uh, wait for me outside. But don't leave. Don't leave. It's so good the way he does it. He's like, don't leave me here alone. And he comes to, I'll pay you $100. And they're, they're haggling back and forth. And Fred's like, oh, I can't do that. And Lamont's like, that's barely going to cover the hospital bills. And he's like, fine, fine. I'll give it. I'll, we'll, I'll offer the extended credit and we'll give you uh, $200 to take care of everything. And they're like, okay. You know, and, and he, he signs him a $200 check. And then he's like, oh, you better get out of it. And then he's like, wait, don't. And then he takes off because he thought the two marshals were going to leave without him. Oh, and the other guy, he did give his summons. He gave it to Fred. So, whatever. So, that guy. So, everyone's out of there now. Now, it's Fred Lamont. And they did it. They got their stuff. They're, they're going to... Lamont's like, hey, we could take this and go pay off all our, our bills. Get the power back on. Get the gas back on. Get everything back the way it was. And uh, what's... Let's see the top five funny... Oh, I already used that. The top five funny I mentioned earlier was when the marshal was like... Named Palmer. And he's like... Uh, you want my advice? I'd get out of this neighborhood before it gets dark. That was another top five funny. It's so good. But it, there was, I think there's like seven top five funnies on this. There were so many good ones on this uh, about getting the respectable job, all those. So as he does that, and now the episode's concluding, you think, hey, remember just like the other one where at the end with the porcelain, and then you're like, hey, everyone breaks even. We're all happy. And then Lamont breaks again. Well, now Lamont's feeling guilty right there. And Lamont looks smooth. He's got a nice jacket. They're going to go out, uh, go get themselves some dinner. And Lamont looks really nice going out for the night. And then he's got that look, though. And you know, you know he's got that look. And what I love is they keep consistent with Lamont from this, how he kind of regrets this. We see it when Grady gets the extra Social Security check, how he's like, hey, I don't think that's fair, Grady. Uh, and then Grady says, look, I'll split it with you. And Lamont changes his mind. And then even then at the end, he's like, nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. So I do like that they consistently stay with Lamont throughout the series like this. But he's feeling guilty. He's like, man, we took from this guy. And Fred's like, what? We earned it. We worked hard for that. You know, we had to put on this whole act to get this back. And he's like, well, how about we'll keep it kind of like a loan. And Lamont's like, we'll pay him back a little at a time. But we'll pay off all our bills up to in the meantime. So you at least, who knows if he ever did. I, I'm going to hold Lamont to his word because he is an honest guy. So that the end of they probably did uh, save up and pay him back eventually but that is it with the summary uh, i try to go as quick as i can to hit up all the key points funny points like i said i left a lot on the floor because some of my episodes i don't mean to i just keep rambling talking about each part and i don't want to break the scene by scene down i like to break down funny parts and basically if you heard this in uh you know a seven eight minute span you get a 20 minute episode so i'm trying to trim each episode comment if you are this far into the video do you like it better like this, where I just kind of talk seven, eight minutes on the episode and then get to the other points? Or do you like the whole thing where I break it down? Or do you not care? You just like to enjoy the watch the show and talk to me, Sanford and Son. So let's get to, we already got top five funny. We got the summary. Now, fun facts. I didn't find anything out crazy fun facts when I looked it up, uh, but I did notice these watching it, the show, and it's just kind of more observation facts. But one of them, did you notice the zucchini can it actually has a white label on the front they're blocking it out so you can't see the actual name we see that a lot in show history other shows did it as well because you don't want to be copyrighted or you want to be sued for using or not paying for their product but it has a white the whole thing blocking the side of the label when Freda is holding the can so that's one thing they do with the zucchini label uh and then fred oh this was a good one when fred when they're talking about it and fred imitates james cagney He's like, oh, you dirty rat. And he does that, right? You, you killed my brother. He does that. Now, what I thought was a great fun fact is he does it another time in show history. Can you remember? Comment below. I'm not going to say it, but if you're this far into it and you remember what the episode was where he does another James Cagney impersonation, if you don't know the episode name, just apart from it, write it in the comments below. I love that. That other episode is funny as heck as well. Uh, great scenes in that one. That I can't, you know, that one's, I think season five maybe four or five so that's some uh, over a year away before we ever hit that episode up but i do love that episode comment if you know when's the other time fred acts like you dirty rat when he does the james cagney impersonation and so yeah it's a sec it's this is the first time of two times he does it and then the last fun fact another observation one isn't it ironic that fred who always needs his glasses right every time he has to read little labels big labels anything 
he sat there and he read the ingredients on the zucchini with no glasses. I noticed that because I used to never wear glasses my whole life until two years ago when I read small print. That's why a lot of times when I'm reading on this, I have to struggle a bit because if I wear glasses, it reflects off the thing so I don't wear glasses. But you need glasses to read and I cannot read a can without squinting like this. And Fred was as big eyes as you can be and he was reading it on there. And I said, hey, that's interesting. He always needs glasses and he's reading a can with small print without them. So that's kind of a mistake they made on the character's part right there for Fred Fa So for fun facts. So those are just three things of this episode. Now, familiar faces. There were some right off the bat, right, that we should know. Number one familiar face was Patrick Campbell. Patrick Campbell, he is, he's done many things. Mary Tyler Moore show. He's done several things, kind of like a lot of character actors where you go, oh, I remember him. He's in that one scene or that one episode. But the minute I see him here, he was the one who had the summons. And a lot of fans will know on here, he was in, uh, I want to say season six, where Fred uh, it has the, is doing letting the archaeolo uh, ar what is that guy called? Archaeologist. There we go. Dig on his land and he finds a dinosaur bone. Remember, at, at first he strikes oil. That was the same guy. He was the guy who was from the college. And then he goes and he finds an actual bone on the land and gets credit for it and donates the money and stuff. But that he's much more memorable and I like that character in that episode where Fred strikes oil and this guy's part of it. So he's there. Uh, what else? Yeah, he played Mary Tyler Moore. The next one, Dick Van Patten. Yes, I love Dick Van Patten. I Was it The Eight of Us? The ten? I think it was The Eight of Us, his show. But I know him from so many other things. Several things that are really big is uh, he hosted a show, uh, a thing, an event on a thing called uh, War of the Stars. And on my other sports channel I have, I run uh, Edwin Brown. He's seen it. He's actually commented on it, I believe. But he hosted a thing with Michael Jordan. We're going to, in a com, uh, competition against Charlie Sheen and um, Martin Sheen. Father and son going against Michael Jordan and a whole bunch of things. Van Patten hosted that. And he's, we know Van Patten. He's done hundreds of things. He's not just a character actor. He's actually a big player. And when you see him, he's familiar. But my favorite thing Van Patten's ever done, ever done, is if you have not seen it, please go look it up. What's happening? Season one, where Rerun wants to do commercials. And he wants to do the bridge. Cross over to the bridge, Burger. Go watch that episode. In that one, Van Patten is the guy who's in charge of who makes the commercial. He is so funny in that one. When you have rerun and then D gets the job and he's like, oh, D, little D, D. And she's so mean to him. And he is so good. It's at the end, too, when there's the old switch. I don't want to spoil it. Look at Van Patten's face. He's like this. And he's looking and he's like, if you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. That's probably my favorite thing ever with Dick Van Patten is what's happening. Season one, uh, it's Bridge Burger. I can't remember. It's Rerun Tries Out or D is on a commercial. Go find it. Find it somewhere on YouTube. You will love it. Comment if you've seen it or if you're going to go see it. I promise you will not regret it. So Dick Van Patten, he was the one who was coming to collect for the, the, the finance company to take all the furniture. And then last was Lee Duncan. Now, Lee Duncan, he was uh, Palmer. Uh, he's, he's done a bunch of it. I know I want to say... Was it uh, Good Times? I've seen him on several things, several other things. And I looked it up and some of the shows I saw, I didn't recognize, but he had been a uh, like a small player in a few movies and shows. He was the uh, the marshal, the one who said, you want some advice, get at it before it gets dark. But he looks so familiar, like I've seen him in other things that I didn't see his title under. Maybe it's just a background guy, but he was great. Uh, great performance in that one. So that is it with familiar faces. That's it. This was the episode, The Great Sanford Siege. Love the episode. I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed watching this one. And these are the ones I love doing because you have so much fun talking about them and that it's just nonstop laughter. And they had a lot of good familiar faces. Sometimes we get one. This one had a bunch, which I liked. Now, I'm really excited for next week. Next week, our next episode, I cannot wait, is Coffins for Sale. That is, it, it, I've done a top 10 show of Sanford and Son of all time and Coffins for Sale was on that list. It was voted number one. Uh, favorite episode of season one on our other channel our family channel when we had you know hundreds of people vote for that and I can't disagree coffins for sale it's the first time we finally get to see uh, sm uh, smiley we get to, uh, not smiley I'm thinking smiley Rogers um, Melvin we get slappy Melvin white Smi I don't know why smiley Rogers is in my mind I think it's a different poll question but we get slappy Melvin white is in it his first appearance ever and it's the two coffins and it is full of comedy so I cannot wait for that look for that next week but comment, please answer any of the questions I ask. Let me know. And do you like this format where it's a little quicker? Either way, thanks. Like, subscribe. 
G is for have a great day, be safe, and enjoy the rest of summer before it's over. Say bye, Red. See you guys. Peace.